Next up, we have Aptahem, a biotech company developing novel treatments for acute inflammatory diseases like sepsis. And here to present the company is CEO Mikkel Lindstam. Welcome, Mikkel. Thank you so much. And thank you, all viewers, to being here today. Uh, well, I'm Michael Lindstam, I said, and I'm the CEO of the company, and also co-founder of it. We are public, so that means we are traded on a market, and that market is called Spotlight. If we then look what the mission of Aptahem is, we are looking at RNA-based therapeutics. Very important to remember. It's a new class of, of uh, very interesting uh, candidates for, for treatments of very severe sicknesses. And they're also called aptamers, which we're working with. And as we were just presented, we're looking into acute inflammatory sicknesses with high unmet need. We have a leading candidate in process, and it's in clinic at the moment. And it's our leading drug, of course, and we're looking at the critical care application for that one for patients that typically suffer from very severe conditions like sepsis and its subclass as well. So uh, looking why we are doing this. Well, it is a huge problem with this kind of uh, sicknesses or sickness syndromes like sepsis and, and their subconditions. If you look at this, just for Europe, almost half a million people die every year from sepsis or septic conditions. And not only the big suffering is, we have also a socioeconomic problem. Look at this, 30 billion in the middle there, euros is the cost to take care of these conditions. Awful a lot of money. Of course, the personal suffering is, of course, number one, but that's something we want to address. And the solution is APTA1, as I just mentioned. RNA drug, it triggers several situations in the septic condition, as we can see it. And it is anti-thrombotic, anti-inflammatory, and we also seen a tissue repairing, tissue generation, if I could say like that, from our studies. And we see it also, it's safe at this point, at the moment, and it's also in the clinic, as mentioned before. So, firstly on to what happened last year, actually, and what we have a, a, a view on last year is that we made several milestones to put a strong foundation to stand on for the clinical entrance of Aptahem. And that has been a lot of achievements during that year, and this is why I bring it up, that created this big fundament. And important to mention here that we increased the team with very good specialists and also get a fantastic regulatory package on place that we're now riding on in the clinical uh, development. And Last but not least, there is a data room complete, as we call it, but it's of course updated all the time. And this is a very important uh, a tool for us when we are out meeting with uh, potential partners. And this is very well filled data room with all our results that people can then study under confidential agreements. And um, we'd like to have visitors there, of course. So currently 2023, we started clinical 1A in the end of last year, and it's running as we speak right now. We also made preparations for clinical phase 1B, which is a big milestones for us to, to, to perform. And that is kind of a proof of concept study in humans that are healthy individuals. We stimulate those and get an inflammatory response where we then can measure the, the very important clinical markers and get the fingerprint that will guide us into further uh, studies up the clinical ladder. And of course, we are also looking at different indications to strengthen our case in, um, in uh, discussions with, uh, with potential partners and for ourselves, of course, especially when now we plan in front of phase two studies. It's important to have that because we get the question all the time, what are you planning for phase two? So we have to have a readiness, a plan, what to do. So that's what we're working very much with. Another side of things we are approaching right now, we need opinion leaders, key opinion leaders, to support and talk for our product. Very important. And we are in the process of recruiting these at the moment. CMC development, what does it mean? Well, it is actually the manufacturing of our drug candidate. And we have then made several very good steps forward to cut cost and, quality and get up the quality. But we are not stopping there. We are continuing with looking at new methods, potential new patent uh, uh, matter, and also to, of course, reduce the cost for the manufacturing, which is an important, or I would say crucial part for a potential partner to see that costs are in within um, uh, reasonable uh, uh, sphere, because to make a product to the market, you need to have your upside and, 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 uh, and make some money on this. That's the crucial world we live in when you're seeking a partner and then go to the market. Anyway, least here, uh, or not least, but most, but last, scientific collaboration. It has been a 
key point in our development of APTA-1 and actually been really important when we have uh, evolved the mechanism of action for APTA-1. So that's very important parts and we still work with them. So we're looking forward to more results ahead of us. Well, I mentioned RNA therapeutic and we have aptamers. I will not go through this, but the aptamers can be built by either an RNA segment or a DNA segment. And we have RNA segments. And if you look at the middle down, you see Lego pieces. That's more or less what's happening here when we're building um, a new uh, therapeutic candidate around a medical target. Then we can build step by step. And that means we can really tailor the function of a candidate on this uh, specific uh, medical target and targets that no one have been able to address before. So it's a fantastic uh, 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 method to, to approach new medical targets or getting more efficient targets. Well, anyway, so we're getting into the big business now with what Abda Heming is doing and Abda One is actually going into the bloodstream. It's an IV solution. And in the bloodstream, we have something called hemostasis. And hemostasis is the system to stabilize and balance everything happening in the body, inflammatory here and there. And here we have, if you look in the middle, the co coagulation cascade, and there you see under the coagulation cascade, thrombin. Thrombin is a coagulation factor, which is a key component at inflammatory response. It gets released only at an inflammatory response. And this is where APTA1 goes in to modulate, inhibit, etc., what we would like to call it. And then we inhibit the platelet activation, which is an important and a key feature to drive the inflammatory process in the body. But more about that uh, in another slide. And here you see the platelet on the left. It triggers a lot of different inflammatory uh, situations here. And I will not go through it, but it's, it's the center of driving this process, I can say. And here in this central driving process, we have APTA1. If you look at the left, you see thrombin again. We are back there we go in and inhibit the activation of these platelets by docking in on only one point of thrombin, and it's the lower part that's called exocyte 2. We only dock in there. As a comparison for a typical anticoagulants, they will dock in on other sites. If you look at the Mickey Mouse uh, ears there, you can see to the left and the right there are active site and exocyte 1. These usually get also inhibited by an anticoagulant, and the effect is that you overthrow the hemostasis a bit and that means you get for example a bleeding effect which we don't see with APTA1. By doing this we get a very efficient inhibition of this uh, platelet generation. We kind of stop that and we have an immediate anti-thrombotic anti-inflammatory response with a kept hemostasis. It's a fantastic combination actually. So everything looks good so far. So we will continue with the next slide and look at who are the benefiters here? What are our stakeholders? Well, we have three parties that with you. We have the ICU physicians. They want to save lives. We have society. You remember the 30 billion euros per year. It's a huge money to save. And of course, the human suffering. We should not forget that, of course. And then a very important player for us, pharma industry partners that have an upside going into uh, running a candidate like this into the market. We should not forget that. Very important. On the left side, you see again the big advantages. And while we are in the acute domain, mo uh, please notice that fast acting, within five, six minutes, you have an effect, which is fantastic. And it's very direct and immediate effect, as I just said before, on the anti-inflammatory response and an anti-thrombotic response. We also have uh, some candidates. We have our main candidate, as I just presented before. We have two more candidates, uh, aptamers here, and they are protected in a patent family one, which protects the structures. Then we have also another patent for apta one itself, which protects more or less any kind of therapeutic use you could think of. And all of these are almost in, in, uh, in patent status. They are not pending. We have a few pending in patent uh, family too, but we can see them as global patent protection. Very strong and very important for the discussions with those pharma industry partners, I can tell you. That's a very valuable asset. Anyway, competition. Yeah, that's always competition. I don't want to focus too much, but this is just a, a, a few other cases out there. And please notice the two middle columns, coagulation, inflammation. If you notice this, you see that the competition focuses on either this or that side of uh, the events going on in the body. Look at APTA1 on the bottom. We have both sides, antithrombotic 
and anti-inflammation uh, possibility. Here. And by that, we give up to a really good potential to cover much bigger patient population. And by that also have a, a wider market to reach. So we here have a best in class potential for sure. So talking about what we're doing, I started a little where we are right now. Here's a tentative development and timelines. And as you notice here, we are right now in phase one. If you look in the lower uh, left corner there, and we are now gaining towards finalizing that and then preparing and uh, enter the phase 1B, which we, I will come back to, we need to finance ahead of us. And if you see a little further ahead, you see phase 2. That phase 2 may be divided into more than one part. I'm just saying that. And if you notice on the upper part, we have a certain amount of milestones. And milestones is important just for your shareholders, the market in general, but also for those who are interested in us. There is a lot of things to tap into uh, when it comes to show that we achieve. And we have to achieve so far, we have kept the timelines, we have delivered so far. So we are very happy with that. And the rest there you see, we have a lot of ambition to, to drive the, the, the other candidates and, and the, the whole package around going into phase two, which we're already now stepping up to towards. Um, okay, team, this is the co uh, core team. We have people coming and going. Uh, but these are the, some, the, the solid stayers at the moment in the company. But this is to keep a good and, and uh, economical viable situation with the company that we take in experts when needed and then they go or not. But this is the fantastic team we're working with and a fantastic board uh, to make things happening here. I'm very happy to work with all of this. Um, as I mentioned, we need to look for some uh, uh, additional money to continue to keep the pace in our uh, uh, development. Uh, and to continue to reach those milestones I just talked about. We have a sharing mission now that will uh, be uh, uh, under two weeks from mid-June, mid 14 to 28 June. And um, this is, as I've been before talking about, to finance the 1B study, the most important uh, milestone uh, so far for the company. And uh, we also prepare for phase two and there's other, of course, running costs, business development and so forth. And uh, you would want to read more uh, about Aptaham. We have here an excellent report from Analyst Group. Read more on their page. I'm just saying that here is a market value and there is also a perceived value for the asset itself and something we can make good use when we are meeting with partners. Uh, but read more about it. It's very interesting reading. And by that, I would like to say thank you so much. Mikael, uh, you, you talked about the rights issue that is coming up. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, uh, you had a rights issue not too long ago, a few months ago. How has the market climate changed since you, th that last rights issue? I would say it uh, changed quite dramatically. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. I mean, we see that it's it's a tough world at the moment and, and uh, people are holding on to the money or people and you know, organizations in general. So you really have to have a strong, strong argument for your case mm -hmm. and, and uh, sell it and, and, and present it in a very good and convincing way. And uh, with Apta One, I mean, we have a very good case. So, you know, it's about uh, the willingness of, of going into to investments at the moment. And we are looking into all kinds of, of scenarios there, of course. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, it's definitely changed. So, and we are looking at an, a share emission now to, to, to start soon, so. Yeah, yeah. and uh, speaking of this new share emission, how will those funds be allocated exactly? Well, the funds, uh, if uh, fully subscribed, of course, uh, it will make us keep our, our speed and our tempo in the clinical development and also the, the, the forwardness of the company. There's other things happening as well that we need to push, but the, the main thing here is to uh, enable uh, one beta study and get that milestone in the bag, mm -hmm. of course. So that's the main thing. And otherwise, it's it's um, running cost, of course, business development. Uh, there are uh, there's normal cost win <coughs> patterns and and uh, and some you know we have collaborations. So, but the main thing is one beta uh, study that is on our focus. So that's that's the main goal. Mm -hmm. that, that's the the lion part of the money we'll go for for sure. Well, and speaking of the uh, the the one B study, uh, now that you are in in phase one, 
how has the industry reacted towards Optum reaching phase one and now moving into phase one B? Uh, you said you're also looking for key opinion leaders. Uh, tell me a little bit more about the market reaction there. The market reaction have been good. I mean, if you look at the professional side of market reaction, and and uh, of course, getting into clinic, it's a milestone, mm -hmm. and and it's positive. But you know, uh, most wants more, mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, and this is why we want to run this. Uh, that's one part we want to run a one beta study, uh, as well as for ourselves, uh, de-risk the project uh, as early as possible to see where we can go in the next steps and and make mm -hmm. a very lean and, and successful phase two and so on, of course. And, and uh, the reaction in general making a one beta is that we have an, as, an, as an early proof of concept that you could ask for, even if it's not in patients. And that has been welcomed by many that I meet. So, so this is kind of a consolidating that, that, that this is the right move to make. Mm -hmm. So this is why we're focusing on this. Uh, several reasons, and, and they are all good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and finally, uh, what are the main goals for Optaham? Uh, here in 2023 as you look forward to these next milestones? Well, it's again, I have to <laughs> revert to the one beta study, of course, but uh, you know, the preparation for phase two and already now knowing where we could tap into or go. And of course, there's a lot of regulatory work I mentioned during the, my, my presentation here mm -hmm. that it takes a lot of preparations regulatory. Uh, and with the phase two, it will be even more mm -hmm. preparations, of course. So, and otherwise we have our scientific collaborations. Uh, we have other things in preparation that we could be seen as milestones for the company, as I just mentioned here mm -hmm. um, some minutes ago. Uh, just, this is one B focus, and of course, business development. Mm -hmm. That's my that's my main goal as a, as a CEO of the company to go out and, and look at. And, and there's a lot of interest and more diverse nowadays. Mm -hmm. And and coming back from an event in US, specifically on oligos and RNA and aptamers and all that, uh, seems that there are a very positive vibe in this field. And and uh, as as uh, chemical entities for for uh, therapeutics, uh, that thing. That's a big belief, and and uh, the other markets are kind of being exhausted. Let's say like that. So, mm. so there's a lot of things happening. So I think we are in the right spot as a company, running RNA therapeutics in the case of the aptamers. I would say so. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, sounds very good. And uh, thank you so much for joining us for this event. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at the next one. Thank you so much. Looking forward to that. Mm -hmm.